Manchester, Hillsborough, District 17, and I come before you with a bill today that simply requires that um, the state police provide tactical cameras to the SWAT teams throughout the state. Um, you might ask, what 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 would start? What would make somebody you know come up with this idea out of the blue? Well, I don't really think it's out of the blue. Um, this morning I emailed you because I'm in this business of saving paper. Um, about a 17-page PDF file of a bunch of news articles that I gathered on, online um, from police stations across the country that not only are using them on tactical cameras on SWAT teams, they're using them on everyday police force. And they're liking it because it's actually providing protection for the police. It protects them from being accused of wrongdoing. It uh, protects them from being accused of... Um, police brutality, of acting inappropriately. Now this bill only talks about SWAT team because I happen to think that those instances are of such a de high degree of um, intensity and often the results are much more dramatic than say a DWI stop. Because quite often in SWAT team situations, someone could end up dead. I actually came here today because a few of my constituents came to me concerned because one of our, another constituent in my district was shot and killed by the SWAT team. You could say, if you read the newspaper article on this particular individual, they're going to portray him as this awful person who, you know, probably deserved to be shot because apparently some people think that people should just deserve to be shot. Um, however, the people who knew him had a different view of him and can't understand how, what happened that brought it to the point that now this father of a nine-year-old was dead. There's no answer. The AG's office said it was justified. Yet nobody really knows what happened because I'm not sure that anybody really knows what happened. SWAT teams go in, their adrenaline's pumping, or at least I hope their adrenaline's pumping. It's a very intense moment in time. And then to have to go back and recreate it from memory for those few moments that something happened that caused somebody to pull a trigger and take another human being's life has to be incredibly difficult. I'm not saying that the police are acting inappropriately. I'm not saying that the SWAT teams are acting inappropriately. I'm saying that we have no way of actually knowing because we're, it's all based on recollection of events at a time when we all would have to agree it would be very difficult to recall all the details. Um, I think that there's a fiscal note on here that says that they estimated $500 a kit, which actually I was very happy with, um, considering the fact that we provide SWAT teams with body armor and rifles and helmets and Kevlar and shields and, you know, handguns and pepper spray and all this other stuff, $500 to not only protect the public, but to also protect the integrity of those law enforcement officers that are in the position of having to make that, that sudden decision as to whether or not they have to um, step into a situation is worth $500 in my view. Um, I will say that there is, um, I think, a technical glitch in the wording. We'll thank legislative services for that. I think that the bill actually just says they have to provide them with um, these kits, where actually I would like them to use the kits. So I, if you decide to go forward on line six, where it says, um, Let's take out the middle stuff. Director of the Division of State Police shall equip all SWAT units and teams operating under the supervision of the state or political subdivision of the state with tactical cameras when performing the duties of their operations. I believe that probably should say what 
with tactical cameras to be used when performing the duties of their operations. Because I don't want to spend money to give cameras to SWAT teams to have them sit on a shelf unused. The point of providing them is to use them to, sh to protect the, the law enforcement agencies and to protect the public, to make things transparent, to make things understandable, to explain to the nine-year-old um, child daughter of one of my constituents what exactly happened that made her father dead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative. Um, you mentioned that a constituent of yours died as a result yes. of an incident with SWAT team. What caused the SWAT team to go to his residence in the first place? From what I understand, because all we're really going to know is what was in the newspaper, um, somebody filed a uh, uh, another family member filed a complaint against him. Very well may be true. However, that's what the courts are for. That's what justice is for. Justice decides whether what somebody claimed was fact or not. We'll never know if that claim was true or not, because half of the parties are dead. And we have no way to go back to see if, if there, he may very well have put himself in a situation where the only recourse was, was to shoot him. I, I don't see it that way because I met enough people who knew the man and I, I tried to be objective enough about the situation. But I don't think that's the point. I don't think we can let justice be in the hands of a SWAT team unless it's really endangering the lives and welfare of the public. He was in his own home. He had his daughter in his own home. He was the legal guardian of that child. I think everybody has the right to be in their own home without having to worry about being shot. Thank you. Uh, Representative Simmons, what do you think that the cameras would have proven? Well, the cameras would have shown what happened. They may, they may have shown what some reports said that um, the SWAT team was going in in this instance and that he was threatening them with a firearm, in which case they had to protect themselves. We could debate whether or not the SWAT team should be there, but in that moment in time, we would know did he have a handgun? Did he, you know, do, was he acting in such a way that would result in um, a reaction from the SWAT team? Uh, do, you, do you realize that this becomes a 28A issue when we say that we're going to tell the towns and cities that no. they have to have a SWAT No, team? actually it doesn't because it requires the... Um, the state police to pay for it because that was my first concern was well I can't tell towns I can't tell Manchester that they have to but we're not telling Manchester we're telling the director of somebody state police, state police. I keep wanting to call it Department of Safety and Science the director of the state police to provide them so this would be for, to all of our advantage if we could get $127,000 out of the budget to put cameras with all of our SWAT teams. Is that what you're saying? I think knowing that one, our SWAT teams are acting appropriately and are justified in their actions is worth $127,000 expense. And I think anybody's life that any person questions may have been taken mistakenly is most certainly worth $127,000 worth of money. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mike, do you think that every situation is the same when we're looking at this area? Absolutely not. If I may have a follow up. For instance, if we had a SWAT team that was out there mm -hmm. and there was Homeland Security and we had. Uh, all kinds of people are very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that would in jeopardize uh, the operation? Not only in jeopardize the operation, it would also put the SWAT team in danger. 
No, Would, I, I do don't so? see. I don't think that recording what people are doing. If if what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. If if what you're doing um, is just, which I think in most cases or in a lot of cases it is. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, oh my God, all the SWAT teams are bad. But if what they're doing is what they sh is what their goal, their mission is to do. I don't see how a camera affixed to their helmet or to their firearm is what going to cause them any safety concerns. It's not going to hinder their actions at all. And if we find out that they did their job well, then that's fine. If we find out they didn't do their job well, isn't that what we want to do? I mean, when I first came up to testify here in Concord years ago, I was nervous. I was uncomfortable. The first thing I did is I went back and looked at video of myself testifying and said, oh, I don't want to do that again. Oh, I have to stop doing that. Football players, what do they do with game tapes? They watch them to find out what they do well and what they don't do well. You know, they look at it and say, well, we can improve in that. Oh, and we definitely shouldn't do that again. That didn't work. So why should, why wouldn't we want to apply that same tool to law enforcement? You know, maybe they, there's things they could learn from seeing how they engaged in a certain scenario to say, you know what, we would have been safer if we had done this, or we could have changed the outcome had we done that, but without a tape, we're going to go by the recollections of people who are in an incredibly intense, fast-moving um, situation where I'm not sure that everybody remembers the details. Like, I'm pretty sure you probably can't remember whether I was here before you called the meeting to order or after you called the meeting to order, and your adrenaline's not pumping. Uh, we don't well, remember the details. Well, uh, who would have access to uh, this uh, video tape? Well, I think it would be in the, uh, just like any other evidence that the police deal with. Whoever has access to other evidence, which is usually the two parties, would have access to this, and I don't see any reason why, why you wouldn't want to provide video of what actually happened to the, vic the victim being the, could be the bad guy, I use the word victim and I don't really always think they are the victim, and to, to um, the prosecutor. Follow up if I may, who, who would have, uh, <coughs> for instance, you think that if anyone could have access to that video? I didn't say anyone could have access to it. Well, whoever would get access, could, when they have a SWAT team that goes out, they want to keep this information. They have a certain procedure. They don't want everybody to know about how the procedure is done, would you believe? I believe that if the public is going to be funding SWAT teams to protect the public interest, then the public has a has right to that information in the circumstances where they are also have the right to any other evidence in a case. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Right. Thank you for taking the question. Uh, you talked about uh, changing some wording on line six. Yes. To put in the use of these cameras. Yes. Uh, and as I read the physical note, there are three parts of this, but there is nothing in here that I see for training the officers in the use of these cameras. Nor is there anything for replacements. So should this physical note be adjusted? I did not write the physical note. However, um, this I, I didn't even suggest vid digital video quarter snake cam and tactical head strap. So I, you know, I'm not even <coughs> sure where that came from, but that was fine. It's a good example. Um, training is this on. Okay, we're done with training now. Um, Repair that that is a legitimate concern. You know that's a legitimate question. I don't I don't know that. Um, I mean I don't have to have my camcorder repaired very often. I don't have to have my phone repaired. They all have cameras on them, so I don't know. I mean, we could amend it to a lot for repairs, I guess. Um, uh, I believe that when you're talking about training here, mm -hmm. it's going to be considerably different than you turning on your phone. I'm sure when you got your smartphone, it took you a while to learn it. The on-off button was really quick. Yeah, but what about using the rest of the features? It's not, there aren't going to be multiple features on a camera. It's going to be on or off. Any other questions? 
Representative Anthony. Madam Chair, I can take my question right to the assembly. Are these cameras remotely activated, like from the command? Trailer? I do not believe so. Again, I did not come up with which items they would want. I just said it needed to have a tactical camera. It would be up to the um, director to find a suitable camera. Uh, if you, when you look at the PDF, there's numerous cameras that are being used uh, throughout entire ships on police with one battery. They're not with a you know large memory card, so <coughs> there would be the extent of um, handing your memory card over to somebody, I guess. But the only time you would need that memory card is if there's a case where something's happened. Just like just like filling out a report. I mean, you don't have to fill out a report if nothing happened, but you have to fill out the report. So this is just another piece of evidence to substantiate that report. Um, in some of the PDFs that you got in your email, um, a lot of police officers said it was actually helpful because they were able to go back and see what actually happened versus the way they recalled it. Um, sometimes probably to their disadvantage, but most times probably to their advantage because <coughs> I'm assuming SWAT teams are trained to react in certain circumstances, not to just run off willy-nilly, you know, with a gun. This is going to show that they acted the way they were trained to act. The problem is, is that the public is not, I don't think, confident when they see reports, because they do involve people's lives, that there is any kind of check and balance as to what happened, because all we ever get is a message from the Attorney General's office that it was all fine, without any details. And when people's lives are taken, people want to know what happened. And I think it's more than reasonable for members of our community to want to be ensured that their, you know, their neighbor was killed for a good reason. Representative, uh, sometimes I'm taking notes, you lose track of the testimony. The question I get, just to clarify in my mind, what was the incident that would activate the SWAT team? What the SWAT team doesn't roll just because they have nothing better to do. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so what was I missed that? In what, this, in the case that the case came that to my attention, um, the gentleman involved was uh, there was a family member who filed a complaint. And uh, to be honest, I never really could get to the 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 bottom of what actually started this whole thing. The police supposedly went to, the Manchester police went to his house on a safety check. I'm not really sure why he was the guardian. You know, not, nobody seemed to really be able to clarify why. He told them he didn't want them there. Maybe he acted uh, inappropriately. That's, you know, we can, we'll never know. He was in his home with his daughter, who he has custody of, and refused to come out. Three days later, after having, I'll be honest, after having the police blare music all night, after yelling at him in bullhorns, after refusing to let family members talk to him, after just an endless barricade for three days down the street from my house, they went in early one morning, from what I recall, with a mirror around the corner, which maybe that's normal for a SWAT team, to see where he was, scooted the girl away and shot him. And when they, the, the justification was that the person who took the shot thought that he was being shot at because the mirror that they stuck in, he hit and it cracked. But then the mirror was found to not be cracked. So this man was shot based on the recollection of somebody who thought they heard a shot when the, there was no shot. Maybe it was all justified. Maybe it wasn't. The right. nine-year-old has no father to ask. Just out of, out of curiosity, it would seem to me that somewhere, somebody had to have mentioned a weapon. Uh, there was. He had a firearm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and he's dead. Yeah. Representative Briazzo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Simmons, wouldn't it have been safer for any of those SWAT officers, rather than sticking a mirror around a quarter, to have a snake camp? I would think so. I would think that that would be able to show what he was actually doing. Uh, they could have probably seen a whole lot more about what was going on and whether he was actually posing a danger to anybody else. Because honestly, I think the man just wanted to be left alone, and if they just left him alone, he'd still be alive. We probably would have, 
prosecuted them. You know, I mean, but that's not the point. The point is we're trying to make it so that, that those circumstances down the road, we have a record of what happened so that the chief of the, that SWAT team can go and say, no, look, it's right here. The guy had a gun in his hand. He waved it at you. You, sh you were very much justified. Uh, and uh, if they did have a snake cam where they were able to see the entire situation, would somebody in the command be able to, be able to view that? The command I, would, I would think that would probably be a very um, likely possibility. I don't know enough about the actual technology. Like I said, I just want to see some sort of re record of the activities and the degree of um, technology that they choose to do would be you know, up to them. I just have one sure. question that, as you've been talking, you keep on saying, you know, we can't trust eyewitness recall, yet we, that's what the court system is all about. I agree, but in a circumstance where we can have a tool that makes us not, I mean, eyewitness an accident, obviously, I, unless we want to arm everybody in the world with cameras on our forehead, which we don't want to do, there's going to be things that are going to have to be dependent on just random witness. <coughs> but this isn't random. This is a planned thing. There is no reason why, if it's a planned thing, we can't use a tool to eliminate the question that anything was done inappropriately. I'd love to have a, the cameras go in place and find out that every single time the SWAT team goes in, they were 100% justified so that people, when they ask me why they're doing this, I can say, you know what? They're justified. I can't do that right now. Right now when people say, what happened in that case? I go, yeah, I'm not really sure. They shot him. We don't really know much more than that. We have different pieces that the media put out. That's all. All well, up to me. <laughs> but you're, but in your opening remarks, yes. would you believe? I probably would. You said, I can't even find out what started this whole thing. <clears throat> but if I was a party to the case, I probably could. And in this case, the family of the person who's dead should be able to find out with some credible um, degree of knowledge what actually happened. Because the person involved, when you have, if, I, if you hit me in your car and somebody else sees it, I'm here, you are here, the person who witnessed it sees it. In this case, the SWAT team's there, the man is dead. He can't say, that's not what happened. Nobody can say, that's not what happened. Okay. That would be Representative Van Wagens and then Representative Fields. Yeah. Representative Simmons, that case was very well publicized in all newspapers throughout the state. Uh, don't you feel as though if the SWAT team had done anything wrong, they would have brought it to light? Only if somebody went to them with information that said the SWAT team had acted inappropriately. I live two blocks from it. I can stand there and watch half of it. I know, t I talk to the neighbors, I talk to everybody around there. Something wasn't right. And maybe, it, maybe the circumstances played out differently than everybody in the neighborhood wants to believe they played out. But there are people in the community, taxpayers, voters, constituents, who are concerned that the SWAT team came into their neighborhood and shot one of their neighbors, and they are not convinced that it was justified. So we, don't, we can't reverse that, but we can put tools in place so that if another circumstance comes up where the SWAT team has to go into a neighborhood and acts and something happens, we can see that they were justified. And then that makes the constituents and the taxpayers and the voters and the people who pay for those SWAT teams far more comfortable than I think they are right now. Would you believe that it's never going to happen? No. Representative Fields. Yes, Madam Chair. Would you believe that I feel that when they have a SWAT team, they've got plenty of guys on that SWAT team. Somebody's going to be able to tell. But the other part of the problem I have is when the trooper goes in or the SWAT team, whoever the regular sheriff is based, well, they're made up of a lot of different guys that go out with the SWAT team. Mm -hmm. They're highly trained, yeah. and I'm very proud of them. That's and awesome. would you believe that when a guy, I don't care who it is, pulls a gun of any sort 
to a policeman, that means to me, if he pulls it out, he may be willing to use that. Are we willing to sacrifice our troopers for some nut out here who might pull a gun on them and take a shot? I mean, you know, you don't know Other what answer. that guy's going to do. Other answer. I was to say, so you want me to tell you whether I think the I life of a trooper is less valuable or more valuable than the life of a non trooper? I know what I said. I'm not sure what the question was. I can't answer it if I don't know the question. No, no, no. no other questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Simmons, for taking my question. Follow up to Representative Fields. Uh, would you believe we spend millions of dollars on equipment for SWAT teams in the state and that they are well protected to take that extra two or three seconds to decide if that person is a threat or not? Would you believe? Can you restate that? <laughs> Would you believe I didn't understand? Our SWAT team troopers or yes. our police officers are highly armored, mm -hmm. protected, have more sophisticated technology and weaponry than your average citizen mm -hmm. that's in their home threatening to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Would you believe that you would think that the trooper <coughs> take an extra two to three seconds to decide if that is an actual threat? compared to automatically reacting to that threat, knowing that he has that extra protection and the chances of him getting killed is far less than that citizen that you're having a problem. I would like to believe that the SWAT team members go to the, you know, right up to the edge of what they have to do before they have to make any sort of action, especially one of a shooting person. However, and I do believe that they are actually in a much more protected situation than often the other person is because they do have the equipment to protect themselves. However, I am, I, I've never, I'm not a SWAT team member, You're not, none of us are SWAT team members. Um, however, they, um, we need to know that in those three seconds that they're acting in the best interest of public safety. And, and if they're not, you know, we just need to learn from that and go forward. I did want to make say one thing because you're talking about protection and whatnot. I did one of the quotes that I found interesting in all this. It says, we give them bulletproof vests to protect them from lethal force, but when your character's under attack, it says damaging, and these cameras can go a long way towards that. Because that's really where it comes down to is, I'm skeptical. I don't want to be skeptical. I want to know that our SWAT teams are doing the best possible public service that they can possibly do. That's all I really want to know, and I think that the, the, the voters and the constituents and the taxpayers in New Hampshire want to know that their money is being well spent to protect our society, and I think this will help that. Any other no more questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Representative, do you have written testimony? I emailed you some stuff, and otherwise I just had my own notes, but there is a... Um, I'll, I'll email them to you. I'm not giving you my handwritten notes. <laughs> Try Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. For the record, Representative Al Baldassaro, Rockingham County District 3, which includes Auburn Monday. I'm going to try to be real quick. It's no secret. I'm the sponsor of the wiretap bill, the videotape, where for public officials, where you have the right to be in order to um, you know, maintain freedom and not be your freedoms attacked on your tape. I've got an issue with this bill, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, this isn't a game, you know, when it comes to protect life with decisions making in seconds. As somebody who served 22 years in the Marine Corps and uh, dealt with operations and operations chief and airfields and other things I've done in my life, and um, to put a camera on a rifle or on a helmet, first of all, it puts the, uh, that police officer in a bad position. You put him in hesitation. Now, let me not even say as a police officer, I'm gonna say as a Marine. Okay, because I can only speak as my experience as a Marine and not as a police officer born into it. You lose, you tend to hesitate in your decision-making process when it comes to life making decisions to protect others or to protect yourself if you reasonably believe they're in immediate danger of death or serious bodily harm. Huh. I have questions on this here because of, uh, first of all, Special Ops SWAT teams, if you put this on their helmets or whatever, and the videos start getting out, now you lose your tactics. 
you start losing your how you go into buildings to after enemy after drug dealers after because 91A will be a big thing on this here to keep getting these tapes. I've heard the testimony here in a few seconds ago on the three seconds. I've heard it on other areas uh, on what could me have, what's good for the taxpayers. But you want to know something? We put our trust and confidence in that special ops team, in that squad, you know, squad team. I would think we would think twice about putting cameras on their helmets okay, to put their life in danger, to be hesitant on how to protect themselves. So I'm hoping this committee does the right thing and use that $127,000 or whatever the fiscal note is and hire a state trooper to back up the state troopers that are driving at night from Canada 100 miles with one state trooper at night instead of spending money here. So that's, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. She got in here. You mentioned special ops team. Yes. Are you aware that SEAL Team Six was wearing helmet cams when they killed Osama bin Laden? I did. I am very aware of that, and I think it was a political thing that should have never happened. Because I'm willing to bet because his, the people in there are very hesitant on making sure everything is um, worried about who's going to court martial, them, who's going to um, you know what problems with that there. There's no doubt in my mind they didn't like that. Did it seem to impede their ability to achieve their objective? Well, we don't know the whole truth. You only see what they wanted you to see. Well, we could see it from some video, couldn't we? Oh, I'm sure you can. But see, the thing is, we gave away probably tactics. We gave away other stuff there. Intel that goes along with those missions. Has the video been made public? Oh, yeah, it's been out. There's been uh, video, been on the news and other stuff in there. It was a political thing. You use veterans as political pawns, yes. It was. Yes. Is it possible with cams that we would give up the identity of the people on the SWAT team? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind you would because of uh, whoever's giving you informative is that, that's there or whatever. There's a lot that's involved with this here when you're doing special ops. We're opening up a can of worms here. There comes a time in our Constitution, we as legislators uh, have to provide the safety for our residents. So there has to be a fine line when we keep throwing out freedom, freedom. We need this, we need it. Think twice about it before you put a police officer's life in, in danger on hesitant, you know, on making that split decision. And I know what it is to have a gun right in front of me and a million and one things go through your mind on what to do. But people tend to play to the cameras, and I've seen it in my career with people with cameras around military bases. You know, when we have bases that aren't on the maps, and we're worried about somebody's going to get out of our, our location and hit us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative, for your testimony. Your last response was a great segue to my question. You mentioned that you heard that my friend from Rockingham County said that a camera may uh, make a police officer think an additional two or three seconds before they use deadly force. As someone who served in combat, couldn't that extra two or three seconds mean a matter of life and death to the officer themselves? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, seconds uh, makes a difference. I mean, your adrenaline is so high, and the last thing you want to do is kill innocent people. <laughs> I doubt we have one state trooper or one police officer in this state willing to pull the trigger to just kill somebody innocently. But now you throw that camera in there, now they're going to think, they're going to hesitate. Their main focus, whoever it is the platoon side, or the man in charge, officer in charge, his focus is the safety of his, you know, his the squad, not just the safety of the people in the building. But any additive to add on to that there of the video, you put them in a bad situation. And just like I believe the president did when they went into uh, get oil. You know, um, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Thank you. Gene, I represent Sharon. We're very friendly here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Belisaro, uh, one of the thoughts that I had is that is it not procedure, when, whether it's special ops or whether it is the, uh, the SWAT team at the completion of the mission, there is intense debriefing comparing everything that occurred on that mission. Oh, without a doubt. There's what we call lessons learned. Yeah. Okay, and what you do when, when your lessons learned, you sit and go through and try to fit. 
how, where do we go wrong and how can we do things better? If you start taping and giving out tactics on how we take out doors, how we go in around buildings, how we utilize informatives in these missions, you might as well just, you know what I mean, uh, put it in the newspaper and let all the criminals know how we do business here in New Hampshire and say we're open for business. Help yourself. Thank you. So, and Representative Wood. Thank you. Thank you. Do you believe that surveillance cameras at private homes and security cameras in stores and, for example, traffic safety cameras can have a deterrent effect? No, I don't think so because I think what it, uh, when you're saying deter against crime, maybe? Is that what yeah, as opposed, to follow up, as opposed to just trying to catch them in the act and people know they're there, they'll act better and, and keep from doing uh, <coughs> I think, I believe in the most part it's a uh, catch the stupid one, okay, that's trying to break in your property because the smart guy is going to try to get around those cameras, he's going to try to slide in and out in different areas, cut wiring or whatever, the smart burglar, so. I think you're right, thank yeah. you. Is there, is there any, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. What is, could you give a little more the explanation of what the debriefing is all about? What is the purpose that the, they have a debriefing after an incident that has happened? The reason why the court. I can't speak for what the state troopers do, and I'm sure if somebody's behind me. I know that many of the state troopers here years of a trained Marine Corps way. Okay, they're drone instructors, and I know damn well they're using Marine Corps lessons learned, and they sit down just like we do in any type of operations mission, whether it be training or real world, and discuss what happened, time, um, you know, um, beans, bullets, do we have everything there? Were we prepared? Did we get out in time? Did we cease on the, uh, off, you know, on our mission? You know what I mean? These are discussed and notes are taken. There's no doubt in my mind these police officers are taking notes after because of memory, because I'm sure uh, they have to file their reports just like we have to do when we go into different homes and other stuff in the military. The follow up, so it would be to improve if uh, the next time it would be Oh, happen. without a doubt, without, without a doubt. So it's a never ending process, would you would, believe? That's right, it would be to make a smoother process on the next time. But they have to be able to change their tactics all the time there and can't use the same uh, because, of course, with video cameras, like I said, you might as well just stay. You know, show them what they, how they go into buildings and what they do. So if they use a certain tool to go into a door, <coughs> then naturally it shows the, the uh, you know, the criminals how to block that door better. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative. Representative Gary. Thank you. Would you believe that in a pressure situation, the hesitation could cost the officer's life? Well, I, I do believe that. Hesitate, well, not only him, but his uh, team. Thank you. Would you also believe that once the officer pulls the trigger, you can't call the round back into the barrel? You're, yes, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would defer, Madam Chair, to Representative Schuler, because he's got a minute. Okay. I'll go afterwards. I'll go afterwards, no matter. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Wes Schuler. I represent District 11 in Rockingham County. I am in, not in favor of this bill because it is a matter of red tape, bureaucracy, and bad tactics. I uh, would ask that you not, uh, that you would be in it, be in it leg legislating this particular bill. It's just not ready. It's dangerous. I have uh, 20, over 21 years federal law enforcement experience. I'm a trained and experienced hostage negotiator. And during my time as a federal law enforcement investigative officer, I trained hostage negotiators, bomb technicians and uh, bomb investigators. And a two second delay in making a decision could be completely deadly for everyone on the scene if the 
perpetrator or the, uh, whoever was standing there happened to have a bomb. How do you protect against that with all the armor, protected glasses, helmets, and what have you? These cameras, in this situation, we're looking at trying to set up a perfect situation. This is not a football game. We do not have cameras at every angle with trained photographers with the best angles, able to maneuver that camera in the perfect position to get the just right shot at just the right moment. It doesn't even happen on Sunday and Mondays and, and football <coughs> games. They don't always get the perfect shot. And if we're depending on the perfect shot to uh, make this case that, that shouldn't, it was a good or bad shoot on the tactical officer's position, I'm sorry, we're just not going to get that. The equipment itself is dangerous. If, would you like to go into a, a, a closed and confined situation with something protruding off of your protective gear, something they could snag? Protective uh, officers go to great extent just to make sure that their weapon is not going to snag on their uh, clothing when if they have to make a tactical draw. We want to be have everything going for that tactical officer, for our police. These are our policemen. This tactical <coughs> team would not deploy if they didn't have to. They are there to protect life. They are there to protect our citizens. And they have to have everything going for them. They are there to save lives. At the very last situation is one where they have to take a life. They are there to save and to protect and to serve us. And we need to give them the best opportunities and not uh, burden them with piles of red tape. That concludes my testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. Doesn't it seem likely that an officer in an operational situation uh, with his adrenaline on uh, would uh, Representative Ginsburg, could you speak up so we the rest of the I'm not trying to. <clears throat> Doesn't it seem likely that an officer in an operational situation with his adrenaline rising uh, would quickly forget about the camera and simply behave as he would normally? Representative, I, I, you started your question with the word, isn't it likely? And that really scares me because this is a human situation. In a human situation, this is not perfect science. People, men, women, in situations like this can make mistakes, but they often do the right thing if they have been trained properly. And this is what we want to give our police, our tactical officers, the very best training possible so that they react properly and what have you. Now, this legislation says requires, this is a requirement, this makes it mandatory. If the tactical team sees the opportunity and wants to use the equipment, and it will be to their advantage in helping make this, uh, re uh, resolve this situation safely, by all means, I think they should uh, have that option. But this makes it mandatory. And it's, you know, for uh, using, uh, so expecting to get some of this uh, equipment into a scene is awfully <coughs> difficult. We, listen, I started doing this in 1984. And even at that time, we were putting listening devices into situations. And it's very difficult to get a listing device inside a bank or inside a room, trying to get around, around obstacles, stone walls, and, and what have you, and get, uh, get it in position so that you can hear or see or what have you. So I would say this, you know, an object, these things haven't been thought through in this legislation. This is dangerous legislation. This is bad legislation. Thank you. Real quick, I think. Yeah, Real briefly, if, if one of the SWAT guys has the camera, but there's five or six rooms, and the one guy goes into this one room where the guy's not with the camera, well, are you saying you got to put a camera on every SWAT team member? Uh, Representative, I, I appreciate your question, but I don't think you're going to answer that one because I, I, I don't know what the possibilities are here. I don't think this has been thought through. I don't think that every number of teams. Could, what happens if uh, my camera, the batteries are, are gone? What happens if I do snag it on my helmet and it's ripped off as I go through a window? There are so many uh, variables here that the. Uh, the it, and then when it doesn't happen, when we don't have the perfect uh, picture, 
Is that going to give legitimacy to the population or to our citizens who are in the neighborhood and, and what have you? The police need to be trained to have a good communication with the, with the neighborhood. And then, uh, you know, that's where I put a lot of my emphasis. Thank you. I believe that if, if the camera was desired, there would be one made available in any given situation. I do. Anyway, there's no other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any written testimony? I do not. Notes? <laughs> you guys like notes. I don't think you can read them, but you're welcome to them, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, for the record, I'm Representative Dan Tamborello, representing uh, Rockingham Three, the towns of Londonderry and Auburn. Uh, I'll make my testimony very brief. I think most of the points that I wanted to cover have been represented, uh, been covered by the two representatives that spoke before me. Um, as I think most of you know, I'm a Marine Corps veteran, 13 years active duty. Uh, I was in Iraq in 2004, 2005, specifically in the Battle of Fallujah. Um, I want to, and I want to use that as an example to segue into an, another example of why I think this is bad legislation. Um, in the Battle of Fallujah, the enemy knew the Marine Corps TTPs. They knew what our rules of engagement were. Why? Because videos, countless videos, were all over the internet. And, and uh, Al-Qaeda and other groups that operated inside the country knew exactly how we operated. And specifically, one of the rules of engagement that they exploited was the rule of engagement that dictated that we couldn't shoot anyone who was unarmed. So what they would do to exploit that would be to stash weapons from building to building, and as you know, Fallujah was an urban fight, and they would run unarmed from building to building. And when they got to a building, they pick up a weapon and shoot at the Marines, probably kill one or two, put the weapon down, and run unarmed to another building. Um, so we had to adjust our tactics accordingly uh, during the Battle of Fallujah, which ended up being uh, the, most bat the most bloody battle in U.S. history since the Tet Offensive and, and uh, Way City. So I got to thinking about it during the testimony here of my uh, two colleagues, and I said, well, how could this be exploited by a criminal in today's environment? Well, using the SWAT example, uh, SWAT team members go into a stack, and they go into it to clear a room very similar to the same tactics that Marines used in the Battle of Fallujah in that urban environment. And what they could do is the first goblin that the SWAT member, SWAT operator encounters could say, oh, I'm not armed, and they can have a buddy around the corner with a gun and put a cap into the, uh, and, and kill the SWAT operators as they came through the stack through the door. Now you've got four dead SWAT operators who don't have a valid shot because their cameras are revealing somebody who's unarmed, but meanwhile around the corner, somebody's shooting them as they're coming inside the door. So now I've got four cops, probably with four families that got to be taken care of by the community and by the state, and you got to explain to the widows and the orphans of these people why we have a law that said my dad couldn't pull the trigger when he went inside the door because he was afraid that he'd be put on trial and thrown behind jail because he shot somebody who was unarmed. Ladies and gentlemen, these are situations that none of us want to be put in. I've been put in the situation where I've participated in the taking of lives. It's not something that you rest with easily at night. Yes, I've lost sleep over it. Eventually you come to terms with these things. But having a camera put on the, the weapon and the helmet of these SWAT operators is not a good idea. None of these men take these decisions lightly. Taking a life is not a decision that anyone takes lightly. So I, I thank you for your time, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank question. you very much. Seeing that I have no questions. <coughs> thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have notes. Real quick. Oh. I have. I'll just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be very clear. I appreciate your service because we threw us a nom. I know what you're saying. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate your service. I didn't know you were Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I certainly do. The man's a saint. I've been sitting here chewing hemp seeds just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the rest of this man? <laughs> I have, uh, was that on the right? I have with me uh, Sergeant <laughs> Duffy. Was, 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 was the SWAT team? Uh, Safely SWAT team, and I'd like to have him come up.
with me in case you have questions. <coughs> but uh, you don't answer questions. Yeah. This bill requires uh, the state police to equip all the SWAT teams and units in the state with these types of cameras. And I wish I had that kind of money, loose change laying around in my budget. But uh, you know, as you know, we have very much austerity budgets uh, this year in all state agencies, and. Uh, uh, we certainly don't have the money to do that. So first of all, if it was something we should do, then I would suggest an appropriation be placed on the bill uh, to enable us to do it. We uh, have been dragging vacancies. We have uh, uh, a lot of, of state triple vacancies. We've been dragging them, trying to save the money in hopes that we'd be able to fill those vacancies later in the fiscal year. And I was informed today that uh, at the end of this week, they're going to sweep all that money and we've been saving now to cover, uh, you know, the deficit in the budget. So uh, the first issue here is 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 one of uh, money. The bill would require us to equip all the teams with tactical cameras when performing duties, state and local, and would create create a really financial burden not only by equipping each of the teams with cameras and monitors, but also to record and maintain the recording. Based on standard operating procedures, as well as case law, police departments would be required to maintain video recordings for years in anticipation of criminal civil proceedings and the process of storing, maintaining, and duplicating would be an additional expense which we'd have to consider. And based on the nature of tactical work, the rate at which they would break, the need for repair would also create expense in addition to the original cost for maintenance, upkeep, and repairs. So, you know. The bill is silent whether we'd have to repair these cameras for the locals and store the tapes or how that's going to happen. But the initial startup cost, as you can see in the fiscal bill, multiplied by the number of members per unit would cost $185,000 uh, plus to equip all 11 active tactical teams in the state. Uh, and that's not including the follow up and maintenance costs or the training costs. And it's anticipated that they probably need to be replaced every three to five years. So if this passes, it should be an appropriation attached because we just don't have the money to do it. Finally, every member of a team has a specific assignment from negotiator to entry to sniper to arrest. So you'd probably, to get a, an accurate picture of the thing, you'd also have to have an additional member who was just taking the, the videos as well as having the cameras on the officers. And if you do that, then you'd have to have a second member to provide arm cover for this photographer because he couldn't be taking photographs and simultaneously looking out for his personal safety. Uh, this would result in an unfunded mandate on the local teams and of course further uh, uh, increase the budget of state police at this time. Uh, Representative Ruby asked a good question. That was who would have access to the tapes? The media would have access to the tapes, and do you think that uh, the families of these uh, individuals who want to be plastered all over the TV the, the next night, showing their relative or, or friend being killed? Uh, and I think that the, the representatives who testified also raised a good point about revealing the tactics of SWAT teams to people who then would be able to uh, subvert the, the, uh, the work of the SWAT teams and probably lead to more. Um, so if you were to pass this bill in an additional appropriation, I would think you would want to uh, amend RSA 91A to provide that the access to those tapes would be limited to, uh, <coughs> to uh, the Attorney General's office, to attorneys that might be following a lawsuit uh, in behalf of somebody who was killed or injured by the team, and to the courts, uh, rather than having them uh, available for general circulation. I heard talk about the Attorney General uh, just coming out with a kind of a quick report uh, and not really saying anything. Well, the Attorney General's reports uh, on these things, first of all, the Attorney General will make a preliminary report, uh, usually within 10 days to two weeks, as to whether he felt under the deadly force law the actions were justified or not justified. <coughs> and that's after an autopsy and after interviewing the, uh, everybody that, uh, that was present or that had any knowledge. Uh, then they will continue and it sometimes takes up to a year, but then they finally file an extremely comprehensive report that again is public information. Uh, so there's really nothing 
uh, nothing hidden about it, and it's not just a quick uh, swipe a thing under the under the uh, table uh, type of a report. Uh, I could get into what this individual was accused of and the specifics of that uh, particular operation, but I think that you know that you could read uh, you could read the attorney general's report and uh, and conclude for yourself, and I won't take up your time with that, but. I think any reasonable comparison of Bennett belts and the cost versus the value, uh, you're going to have to look at the cost of this bill as compared to the value of society, whether it's a winning or losing proposition. But at the very least, I think that it would be uh, necessary to put appropriation on it and to put some kind of a shield of, that, of those tapes so that they couldn't be just plastered all over and become viral on the internet. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. And Sergeant Duffy is here if you have any technical questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Sweeney, are there any dashboard cams on any law enforcement vehicles in the state of New Hampshire? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are. Yeah. Follow up. Well, what's the purpose? Uh, the purpose of those uh, dashboard cams is, first of all, uh, to provide evidence. For example, if you're stopping a car for reckless driving or whatever, you can. You can replay the, the actual actions of the vehicle. Uh, we use it to uh, uh, for disciplinary purposes. If we have an officer that is rude to somebody or, or is out line, uh, to counsel that officer or discipline if necessary. And uh, they also are, are used to uh, as exactly a, uh, a recording of what actually took place. Further follow up, Matthew. Why wouldn't the same apply to uh, SWAT team and possible taking the team claims? Well, first of all, let me say that we don't buy cameras for every police department in the state. We take care of our own, and we don't even have enough money to equip all of our state police cruisers with cameras. We wish we did. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the, the uh, that part of it. As far as the, uh, the uh, SWAT operation, SWAT operation is a lot different than a traffic stuff. I mean, you've got people coming in, and I think you've heard the testimony about the deer and the possibility of getting snagged and, and so forth. So, uh, in the best of all worlds, that might be a good thing. Uh, but I think this bill, as it is, is fraught with some problems. Thank you, Commissioner. Do uh, do individual police officers now have a camera on their persons to record incidents when they make a vehicle stop? Over no, no. There are some. There are some uh, uh, police departments now that are beginning to uh, equip police officers with almost like a miner's helmet, flashlight type <coughs> camera, uh, so that when they are out of the cruiser, uh, they can still record their activities. And I don't know how costly those are, how, how widespread they are, or what they, uh, what's you know, going to be the final verdict on them. But they are used, I believe, in Great Britain, which, of course, they've got the cameras on every street corner uh, that the lobbies are using. So without those cameras available on the individual police officer, the dash cam, would you believe, only records what's in front of the windshield on a vehicle stop so that anything happens outside and we've seen all these cop shows that show officers off camera dealing with uh, an alleged perpetrator and uh, it's not recorded now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you have a camera, for example, an officer's head, wherever he swivels his head is, where, <laughs> is what it's going to take a picture of. And that's why I say that I think you'd also have to have a an individual was assigned particularly as a as a photographer or a camera operator in addition so that you've got the entire scene. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sweeney uh, since you're going to give Portsmouth cameras for the SWAT team helmets <laughs> is there anything in this bill that states that you will pay for the repair of them? No, there is. It's silent as to that. Could you give us an idea that what happens to a police officer after he shoots someone? Well, having shot 
somebody once many, many years ago, I can tell you that it's an extremely traumatic experience. Fortunately, the individual I shot didn't die. I died a thousand deaths while he was on the way to the hospital and questioned myself uh, for a long time to come as to whether there was anything I could possibly have done uh, to avoid having pulled that trigger. And uh, many of the officers that I know that have been involved in those situations, uh, within a couple of years they're probably out of police work, even if it's judged to be a, 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 a legitimate shooting. Uh, it still is a, a burden you carry with you the rest of your life, so it isn't something that's going to take a life. Good to see you again, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, do you know of any state in the country, in the United States, that they have cameras that they're doing this with, though? That's why the young South Dakota decided to duck it because he did a little research on it. I know you pretty much. Uh, Representative, I can tell you that in New England there are none, and, and I, I don't know about the rest of the country, but I did poll the entire uh, six New England states. Uh, and I can tell you that none of the New England states are currently using tactical cameras uh, on SWAT teams, and there are certainly none in the state of New Hampshire that are using them as well. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think you can take my question. Mr. Sweeney. Regarding the robot, robot cameras, yes. how are they used within a particular scene like what we were talking about earlier? Well, you have to be able to get them in there, and that's one of the reasons a mirror was used in this particular case instead of a robot. Sergeant, you can explain the robot that we have and how we use it. Yes, I can. Our representative robots are, are typically used um, to put into a, a dwelling so that you don't have to put an officer in, and therefore jeopardizing that officer's safety. Uh, but the the um, the mere nature of the robot um, and its maneuverability, it can get into places that uh, that then directs a feed back to the CP, where we can determine uh, whether or not uh, an individual is hiding or, or what's going on inside of that that dwelling. How often does it use? Typically, uh, for barricaded subject situations, which is essentially an individual who's uh, barricaded inside of a residence, usually, uh, and they, uh, there is a warrant for their arrest and they're refusing to come out. Typically, we use them when we can get them inside the building on almost every single barricaded subject call. One more follow-up, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Has it ever been used to justify or unjustify an officer? After a shooting, has it ever been utilized for that purpose to justify a shooting? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, well, let me rephrase. Uh, let me better answer that question. Not in my career, uh, 14 and a half years on the SWAT team. Okay. Can there no other questions? Thank you very Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is uh, Representative Mike Fall. I represent Hillsborough District 9, which is uh, Ward 2 of Manchester, and I'm also the chairman of the Manchester Republican Committee. Uh, I'm one of the co-sponsors of this bill. 
Uh, I want to start off my remarks, uh, first of all, uh, by saying that this is, uh, I don't know how it is uh, portrayed by some folks, uh, some folks look at this as it could be a possible threat to our police officers and our SWAT teams, and uh, I decided to co-sponsor this for exactly the opposite reason. I think this is in support of our police officers and our SWAT teams uh, because it takes away an element of guesswork uh, in, their, in their activities. Um, I think that having a, uh, a helmet or vest mounted camera would set the public's mind at ease. Uh, many times we call out um, uh, folks in the SWAT teams to handle the most dangerous situations in being in Manchester. We certainly run into that quite a bit. Um, so that we would have an ability for our police officers to be able to go back, uh, review these um, videos for training purposes. Also, if there's any sort of um, uh, controversy involved in anything that, that occurs in, in the uh, carrying out of their duties, that there, uh, there could be a, uh, certainly a, an element here that uh, would, would uh, give um, uh, video support for that. One of the, one of the reasons, that, yes ma'am? That was the information that we got from uh, Representative Simmons. I, 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 been new to I apologize. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I, I was across in my other committee. I apologize <coughs> but if I'm rehashing uh, old territory there. Uh, one of the one of the elements um, that I that uh, really drove me to become involved was the uh, case of um, Jose Garena. I don't know if that name was brought up. Uh, he was in uh, Pima County, Arizona, in May of last year. Uh, he was a veteran, a Marine veteran of two tours in Iraq. Um, he heard a disturbance, a young man heard a disturbance outside his home uh, at night. Uh, he armed himself and directed his wife and children to hide in the closet. He didn't know, uh, he didn't know exactly what the disturbance was. What it was was a SWAT team had misidentified his home for a raid. They were supposed to raid a home adjacent to his. It was a, an error that can happen to anybody. They had video uh, during this raid in the court and the uh, SWAT team members armed with heavy automatic weapons. In the course of seven seconds, they fired 70 rounds, 60 of which struck Mr. Garana. There's video of that, and we can provide a link to that. He was not uh, wrong. The SWAT team members were innocent as well. They opened into a room that they, they thought that they were supposed to be and saw a man armed with an AR-15 rifle. So both of them were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's this will allow now certainly the issue there is the misidentification of the of the home and that's that's the, the issue there but i think with having a video of this uh, it also brings to bear uh, the responsibility that folks have when we entrust them with extraordinary powers um, our SWAT teams are for lack of a better term paramilitary units, just like our police departments are. We give them additional powers that the average citizen does not have because we ask them to do a very difficult job. And uh, certainly the SWATs, SWAT team, Special Weapons and Tactics, we send these gentlemen and, and ladies into very, very dangerous situations uh, and ask them to do sometimes an almost impossible job. Um, they, they oftentimes are put in very untenable situations. And I think that uh, in defense of our men and women in the, in the uh, police force and the SWAT, in the SWAT force, they need to have the, the um, peace of mind also that there is a video that shows that they follow the proper procedure. These are highly trained people. Uh, they are uh, the most entrusted people in our society for the most part. Um, and I know that there's a lot of, there's a lot of discussion that, um, that cameras, a, you know, a helmet mounted camera or something like that might get in the way somehow. Um, I'll harken back to the, um, the uh, operation in Pakistan that uh, took out uh, Osama bin Laden. Those uh, folks who are among the most elite forces on the planet had video streaming back to the White House so the President and his cabinet could watch the operation as it took place. And there was, that was not a law enforcement action. That was, uh, had definitely a different outcome that was desired. Um, that did not impede those uh, gentlemen from performing their duty. And I think that uh, certainly having a helmet mounted camera uh, will put uh, both sides, give information for both sides of the, uh, of the issue. And uh, that's really why I wanted to do this. This is a protection for the citizens and for the police department equally. Uh, and, and this is not an anti-police 
uh, or pro-criminal bill or anything like that. It's just uh, so that everyone we have as much transparency and information as possible for the public. And that's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative. If I understand, to kind of condense your testimony, uh, part of the reason you co-sponsored this bill was you thought it would be the, in the best interest of the SWAT team members? Yes, sir. Could you tell us how many SWAT team members before you spoke to before you co-sponsored this bill? I did not speak to answer. Thank you. Sure. Um, Representative Bob, would you and the sponsor be willing to make amendments to this bill to address the concerns of the SWAT members and Commissioner Sweeney? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. There are no other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Close this hearing.